the first church of social media. We're doing a, a mandate for today. It's a mandate for deliverance and healing today. It is a powerful, powerful word from the Lord. And we're going to get right into a short prayer. This is the official power prayer, the OPP. Are you down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Yeah, yeah. It's the official power prayer. If I had to title this, it would be the mandate, deliverance and healing. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Father God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We so love you. We honor you, Father. We worship and praise your holy name, O oh God. Oh God, right now we just ask of you just to saturate this atmosphere, oh God. Saturate this line, oh God. Touch each and every person that is connected to this line, oh God. And God, whoever watches the video, oh Father, we pray that they be touched in some way, oh God. That you change their life, oh God. That they will never be the same again. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and the honor, oh Father. And we ask of you, Lord. To remove me right now, oh Father. Remove me and fill me up with you, oh God. Have your way, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Okay, today's scripture is going to be Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse 45. Again, that's Matthew, the 12th chapter verse 45. That would be the first scripture. And the second scripture is going to be Mark 5, 24 through 34. Again, that's Mark 5, 24 through 34. And the first one reads as follows. It's Matthew 12, verse 45. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. That was the New King James Version. I want to read to you also the message version blow your mind. It says, when a defiling evil spirit is expelled from someone, it drifts along through the desert looking for an oasis. Some unsuspecting soul, it can be devil. When it doesn't find anyone, it says, I'll go back to my old on return, it finds the person spotlessly clean, but vacant. It then runs out and rounds up seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they all move in, whooping it up. That person ends up far worse off than if he had never got cleaned up in the first place. Hmm, my God. And this is the second scripture. Mark 5 24 through 34. New King James Version. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. 26, I mean, for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in a crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that the power had gone out of him. 
He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Today, we're going to be talking about both of these scriptures. And both of these scriptures, we're going to tie in three things. The first thing would be your persona. The second thing would be your perspective. And the third thing would be prospective. So I go to Starbucks pretty much every day. Uh, I order the pumpkin cold brew. Um, fall is a, the greatest season. I really like it. Um, not just because my birthday is on the 24th of October. It's not just because of that. I mean, I, you know, you know, but, um, you know, it's uh, Starbucks. They have some great fall drinks and everything comes out pumpkin around that time. Um, I love pumpkin pie. I like sweet potato pie. I like Thanksgiving. You know, those are the great things that happen during the fall. And in particular, though, this pumpkin spice cold brew, um, it, it's, it's made like this. So they put they pour in the cold brew first, which is cold coffee. They pour that in first and then they put some ice in it. Right. And after they put the ice in it, they blend this sweet cream and makes a foam out of it. And it has pumpkin spice in the sweet cream and they blend it to it has a foam texture. And then they put they pour that on top of the coffee the cold coffee. Now, when they first pour this on top of the cold coffee, it doesn't quite mix in the beginning. It doesn't mix. You can see the layers of the foam. You can see a layer of the sweet cream and you can see the coffee. You can see the three different layers. And then you have the ice throughout the whole thing. So when you just shake it a little it, it, it tends to, the foam and the sweet cream tends to run down and mix in, you know, just a little bit. Not a whole lot. Because you still can see the blackness of the coffee. You still have the ice. And you still have your three layers. But if you, even if you just let it sit there, after a while, it still all mixes together. But to the point where you still can see that you have the coffee. And after a while, the foam and the cream begin to take over the whole coffee. So then the coffee, all you see is this cream based coffee and you still have a layer of foam on top. Now, if you look at our text today, this sort of sounds like the text in Matthew. Where it says that when a defiling evil spirit is expelled from sun one, it drifts along through the desert looking for an oasis. If some expecting a soul, it can be the devil. When it doesn't find anyone, it goes back to the old haunt and it returns it to find the person spotless and clean but vacant. So basically, when the cream goes, falls down into the coffee, the black coffee represents the empty soul. So the, 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 the cream and the foam represents the evil spirit that's trying to seep down into the empty soul. See the ice, now the ice represents Jesus. So as you go, as the everything seeps together, and, and turns into the cream-based coffee, it's the same thing that happens to an individual where basically uh, you become clean, you get saved, you, you, you get saved, you give your soul to Jesus, you know, and what happens is you will be tested. And we tend to do like a peep 
peephole type thing, you know, because basically the peephole thing is basically, you know how you, somebody knocks on your door and you go to the peephole, you see who it is. And let's say you don't see nobody there. Then you always get that. Well, the younger generation, the older people, they just going to walk away. But the younger generation, oh, they're going to open the door to see if somebody is walking down the hall or something to see, you know, if somebody really was knocking on the door. So that at that point, when you open the door, that's when you're letting the spirit back in, because we're going to first start with your persona, which is your character. See, the things that you tend to do and see, we're supposed to be a Christ like character, but sometimes we're not. So we're giving the evil spirit opportunity to come in when we do things outside of a Christ like character. You know, the things that you really should not do, the things that you tend to indulge in that you know are not Christ-like. Those things that you attend to indulge in uh, tends to uh, build your persona. A persona is your character. So if you don't build the Christ-like character, we tend to be like the people. We tend to be like the Starbucks coffee, the foam when it runs down, mixes in with the black coffee. It, it, it's opening the door for the evil spirit to come in. Even though they might not take completely over, as long as we don't maintain that Christ-like character, as long as we do not stay deep-rooted in our word, as long as we go places that we should not go because we're not strong enough to handle the spirits that may come up against us, or maybe we do things or say things that we, do, we know that are not Christ-like. See, when we do these things, we open the door for the, un, the unclean spirit, that evil spirit to come in and to take over us. And then we start acting completely out of character. And that is your persona, people. That's your persona. And all the Lord is saying, hey, please maintain a connection with me. Please maintain your discernment. See, your discernment was when you look through that peephole and you know, well, nobody there, you should just walk away. You don't have to open the door and you because you're curious, you're going to open the door. But people, you know the saying, curiosity killed the cat. It would do the same thing to you if you open the door and you allow the enemy to come in like a like a flood. If you open that door, if you do that, un, that Christ if you do that thing that's unlike Christ to open the door for the enemy to come in, he will come in. He will come in. And he will take over. And then you'll be wondering why you acting out of character. If you even notice it. That people is your persona. So now we know what your persona is. Now we're just going to go to your perspective. The perspective is the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth, and position in relation to each other when viewed from a particular point. The second definition is a particular attitude toward or a way of regarding something or a point of view, a perspective. So we look at the persona. The persona is your character. <clears throat> and the perspective is your point of view, how you view things. And I'm here to tell you that we have to keep the right persona. And not only that, we have to keep the right perspective, the way that we think, you know, the enemy is out to offend us. That's his number one bait. He will use anybody or anything to offend us. So we must, we must keep our perspective in the right place. We must learn how to be optimistic about more things. We must learn how to be more humble in our actions and our thoughts. So that way we can remain in our right persona with the right perspective.
You didn't hurt me. So now you have to remain in the right persona so you can have the right perspective. You need to keep your mind on Christ. You need to stay rooted in, in Christ. So that way, when the enemy comes, somebody tries to offend you, you can have that discernment. You can have that peep hole mentality where basically you know that, hey, somebody's just trying to offend me today. They're trying to disrupt my day today. Hey, I'm going to keep the Christ-like mind. I'm not going to let them offend me. I'm not going to let them upset me today because the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to notice it and I'm going to, I'm just going to speak the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow off of his name. And if you don't know that, say the Lord's Prayer. You have to do something to shift the atmosphere so that way when you, when something's trying to throw you out of your character, your persona, or something's trying to change your perspective, you can gain control of the situation. Because if you don't, people, you're going to be like the Starbucks coffee where the cream that seeks in slowly, slowly begins to take over the coffee where you just don't see nothing but the cream, that's it, which is the evil spirit. That's all you see. And people, I'm here to tell you, we have to stay deep rooted. We have to keep our mind on Jesus, no matter what the situation is. Remember, he will give you perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. So now that we know the persona and now that we know the perspective, the third thing is the prospective. Now, I want to give you the definition of the prospective. The prospective is an expected or expecting to be something particular in the future. For example, she showed a prospective, a prospective buyer around the house, likely happened at a future date, concerned with or applying to the future people. So if we know the persona, we know the perspective, now we are in the Prospective. And if we look deeper in the word prospective, that means that you are a prospect. That means that you are pro. Now, I know in football, when you get to the NFL, you're considered a professional football player. That means you're a pro football player. That means you done got to the top of your game. You done got to the top of the league. You're now your faith is considered a professional because now that you have remained, your persona has remained, your character like Christ and your perspective has kept you in line with your character. Now you can become a prospect, a prospect for Christ because all of us have to become a prospect. That's the greatest thing. He wants us to become disciples. So in order to become a disciple, you must become a prospect. In order to become a prospect, remember, this is a mandate for the healing and deliverance. Right now, we're on the deliverance part. So you now you have your prospect. Your prospect because now you became a professional. Now that you understand your persona, your character, now that you're under your perspective, your mindset, now we have you to be a prospect. You see, when we look at the verses in Matthew, it says, then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And then the last state of the man is worse than the first state. So shall it also be wicked in that generation. See, what it is, is when you start out just like the Starbucks coffee, you're clean. It's all black. You got the three layers. You got the foam. Then you got the cream. And then you got the coffee. But after you sit there a while and you don't remain, you don't have the right persona. You don't have the right perspective. You, 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 be, you begin to allow the spirit to overtake you. And we're not talking about the correct spirit. We're talking about the unclean spirit. The unclean spirit, you're opening the door by your mindset, by the way you act, by the way that you carry yourself. Now, God is telling you now to get clean. This is a mandate for you to get clean so you can have the right persona, the right perspective. So then you can become a prospect, people. So now that we done looked at this text, we're going to transfer over to the other text. The other text is Matt. Um, <clears throat> the other text is Mark chapter five, 
verse 24 and 34. We're going to look at the same three words, okay? Three points. Persona, perspective, and prospective. Now, as we look at, listen, let's just, let's just read the text again. It says, so Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in a crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that the power, the power had came out of him and turned around to the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her and who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So we're going to look at her character first. Now, if we look in the beginning of the verse where it says now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, 12 years. That means through those 12 years, she went through pain. Through those 12 years, she was in depression. She was depressed because she everything she did, it did not work. It says that she had suffered from many physicians. People, this is her character. She developed a character where basically she didn't know what to do. She needed this thing to dry up. She needed this situation to be fixed. How many times do you find yourself in the exact same situation where you have done things for years because you did it yourself? Your persona, the person, that's you who did it yourself. That was your character. You didn't have no other characters. You was trying to do everything by yourself. That is your character. That is your persona. So now we're going to look at her perspective. Now her perspective was she had spent all this time from many physicians and <clears throat> And she had spent all this time that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. People, if you're in that situation, your automatic perspective is basically you're going to give up. Like she gave up for a while. She didn't know what to do. She felt like nobody could help her. No physician could help her. No friends could help her. She felt in a place where she was all alone. I'm here to tell you, people, if you feel like that, if you feel like you're in a place where you're all alone, tonight is your night. This is your man date. This is your man date. And I'm here to tell you, tonight you can be healed. Tonight you can be delivered. Tonight is your night. And we looked at her persona where she was in a deep, dark place. And we looked at her perspective. She felt like she just didn't know what to do. She felt like she couldn't go on. But then her perspective changed. It changed because it simply says right here in the word. When she heard about Jesus, oh my God, y'all don't get it. When she heard about Jesus, mm, mm, mm. when she heard about Jesus, that means when you hear the name of Jesus, you ought to get some type of a sight. I mean, something ought to just flow through you and get you a little bit more uppity than you were before. Because you remember, you have to change your perspective. You have to change your persona. And this woman knew these things. She had to change her perspective. She changed it because when she heard about Jesus, she knew and believed that she could be healed. And that's all I'm telling you right now, people. In order to change your perspective, you must believe. In order to change your persona, you must believe. This is a mandate. We are decreeing and declaring there will be deliverance tonight. There will be a healing tonight because this is the word 
of the Lord. So we see that when her perspective changed, all she she just heard about Jesus and she went up behind him in a crowd. That's how desperate she was. She went up in him through him to find him through a crowd. Are you that desperate to change your situation? Then, hey, I'm telling you now, if you are, whether it's a sickness that you need to be healed from, whether it's a deliverance you need to be delivered from, I'm telling you, tonight is your night. All you must do is believe and have the faith and be able to be that hungry, that desperate, that you can just reach through the crowd to find your destiny, to find your deliverance, to find your healing, because tonight is the mandate. And as we look at all of these texts and we found out that, hey, my persona must change. My perspective must change. I want to become a prospect just like this lady did. Once she changed her perspective, she became a prospective, a prospect. Immediately, immediately she became the prospect because she wanted her healing and she knew what she had to do. She became a professional quick. How many of y'all are ready to do that? Are you ready to change your situation? Are you ready to change your life? Are you ready to grab it? It's right in front of you. And it's the name of Jesus. His precious blood it is right here in front of you. And people, let me tell you right now, you got to change your persona. You got to get your perspective in order. And you got to be the prospective person to get these things, to get your healing, to get your deliverance. you got to be the prospect. I'm here now to help you become the prospect. And in conclusion, people, we're going to look at this one verse. And when I read it, I just was like, oh my God. So in the beginning, when we was reading Matthew 12, 45, if you go all the way up to verse 39, to 40, it reads as follows. Jesus said, you're looking for proof. <laughs> you're looking for proof, but you're looking for the wrong kind. All you want is something to tallyate your curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat. Satisfy your lust for miracles. The only proof you're going to get is what looks like the absence of proof. If we look at Jonah and the evidence, like Jonah was three days and three nights in the fish of a belly. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say that again. Like Jonah, for three days and three nights in the fish of his belly. One more time, because I don't think y'all get where I'm going. It says, like Jonah, for three days and three nights in the fish of his belly. The son of man will be gone for three days and three nights in a deep grave. But we all know that he went through the same situation with his persona and with his perspective. And he became the prospect. Because if we remember, if we remember, his perspective changed. Even though he had the Christ-like mind, because he was Christ, he had the right persona. But his perspective changed for a moment. It was just a split second. His perspective changed. How do we know it changed? Because if you remember, he called, he, he simply said, um, do I have to bear this cup? But he knew what he had to do to get to his destiny. He knew what he had to do. He had to die on the cross for us, people. And even though he died on the cross for us, he rose again on the third day. And I'm here to tell you that you can rise again on the third day. You can live like Christ lived. You can change your situation. You can resurrect your dead situation. You can resurrect that relationship. You can resurrect a new job. You can resurrect your health. Tonight is your healing. Tonight is your deliverance. And all I'm here to tell you is people. You must become the prospect. Tonight is about the mandate. Tonight is about the change in your life and all you got to do is grab it. It's right here in front of you. Just grab it, people. Grab it. It's right here in front of you. And we about to go in our prayer. We about to go in our healing and deliverance prayer right now.
Because somebody is hungry. I don't know who it is. Somebody is hungry. Somebody is looking for that chain. Somebody is looking to be a new prospect for the Lord. And I know, I know, I feel it. It's going about to be some chains about to be broken. Some lives about to be changed. Some yokes about to be broken. Some soul ties about to be broken. It's time for you people to start your new day. It's time for you people to start your new life. It is time now for the mandate to begin. It's decree and declare right now in your own life that I am changed. I am healed. I am delivered. I am free. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We come before you right now, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. God, we're asking for the people, oh God. We're asking for the land right now, oh God, that you change their persona, oh God, that you change their perspective, oh God, so they can become a prospect for you, oh Lord. Lord, we're asking you to hear Heal the land, oh God. You tell we humble ourselves, oh God, and pray, oh God, that you would heal our land, oh God. We're asking for a healing right now, oh God. We're asking to be delivered, oh God. We ask to become a better person and prospect for you, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. So God, send your angels down upon this right now, oh God. Lay your right hand upon this, oh God, so we can be set free, oh God, so we can be delivered, oh God, and become that prospect for you, oh Lord. Lord, you are the great I am, oh God. You are a Jehovah Rapha, oh God. The God who heals, oh God. You are Jehovah Jireh, oh God. The God who provides, oh God. You are Jehovah Sikkanu, oh God. The God, great God Almighty, oh God. And we're calling upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Rain down upon this land, oh God. Heal us, oh God, as we cry out and proclaim you, oh Father, because you are the King of kings, oh God. The Lord of lords, oh God. Heal us right now, oh God. Heal our bodies right now, oh God. Heal our situations, oh God. Heal our mindset, oh God. So we can have the right perspective for you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We decree and declare, oh God, that it is so, oh God. We are healed, oh God. I'm declaring it right now because I am healed, oh God. I am free, oh God. I need for you people to declare it right now in your house. You hold your hands up high. You declare, I am healed. I am blessed. I am delivered. I am free in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, oh Lord. Thank you for the shift in our atmosphere, oh God. Thank you for the shift in our mindset, oh God. Thank you for the shift in bringing us to be a prospect, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen us, oh God, so that when the spirits come back, seven more comes back so we can be have enough discernment, oh Father, to know what's going on around us, oh God. What they're trying to bring up against us, oh God. We're girding up with you, oh God. We're girding up with your word, oh God. Our best defense is your word, oh Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We decree and we declare in the mighty name of Jesus. You are free. In a shobo kata shedebe. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We glorify you, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. There is no one like you, O oh Lord. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory, O oh God. We thank you, Father. We thank you for all you're doing right now, oh God. We thank you for the change that's about to take place in our life, oh God. We thank you for the new day, oh God. We thank you for our new persona, oh Father. We thank you for our new perspective, oh God. We thank you for allowing us to become new prospects, oh God. Thank you for still loving us, oh God. Thank you, oh Lord, for who you are, oh God. We thank you and we give you the honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 i hope this has touched somebody tonight i'm here to tell you that our lord is good his promises 
I kept his word, never comes back void. Tonight is your night, people. If you don't have a relationship with him and you want to become that prospect and you want to change your persona, and you want to change your perspective and you, you want to be that prospect, you have that hunger, now is your night. I am opening the doors to the church. It's time for you to give your life to Christ. It's time for you to make a move. If you move, he moves just like that. And it can be done, people. It can be done. Tonight is your night. All you got to do is email us at First Church of Social Media at gmail.com. Again, just email us at First Church of Social Media at gmail.com. We have people waiting for you right now. Tonight is your night. Not only that, maybe you want to join this church. We're waiting for you. <clears throat> it's a lot of work to be done out here in the kingdom. We're out here to make disciples. That's it. That's all. Email us, First Church of Social Media at gmail.com. And if you want to give, we have two ways to give. If you want to sow a seed, the first way is to cash app us at dollar sign F C O S M. Again, that's dollar sign F C O S M. Or you can just text, text give G I V E, the number two F C S M two seven seven nine seven seven. Again, you could text the word give the number two F C S M. Two seven seven nine seven seven. Let me give that to you one more time. You can text the word give G I V E the number two, the letter F C S M to seven seven nine seven seven. God bless you all. I hope you take note and pay very close attention to the mandate that has came across from the Lord. He is trying to clean us up, people. He's trying to clean us up. And now it's time for us to get clean so that we can become that prospect. Remember, change your persona so you can get your perspective in order so you can become the prospect. God bless you all. May his grace cover you throughout the rest of the week. And we will see you Sunday at 1 o'clock Central Time. We'll see what the Lord has to say. God bless you. Bye-bye.